Hello and welcome to this PE Design 11 tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to look at a kind of trendy embroidery method that is going around a lot on the internet right now. It was actually brought to my attention by someone who came in asking if I could help them do it and at the time I, I didn't really know the best way of doing it so I did a bit of thinking and it's actually a lot simpler than you think. Well it's a lot simpler than I thought anyway. I got a bit of help from Sue at work. She made me sort of realise how, how much I was overthinking it. And I'm going to take you through that right now. I mean, it could be helpful for this Valentine's Day if you're looking to make something for someone that means a lot to you. So, so to start off, we're just going to open our image. To do that, you go to Image and then Open from File and then browse to the image that you want to um, outline. There's my one. Um, from what I can tell, it's quite trendy to just do couples pictures. But I mean, there's nothing stopping you from doing it with anything. You could do it with a dog. Um, you could do it with a scene, like a, you know, like an ocean scene with a boat or something like that. Um, the possibilities are really endless with it. It's quite a simple concept. I like to turn the transparency down on the image. It just helps me sort of go over the top of it without it obscuring my, my lines. Right, after that you want to go to the Shapes tool. In the Shapes tool you want to select the Open Curve tool. You can press the X key on your keyboard to shortcut to it. I'm going to choose a very contrasting colour so that I can see it anytime, no matter what. It's not going to be my final colour but it just helps me visualize it. And then you simply want to just click in intervals in order to create curves around the objects. It sounds quite difficult from how I just explained it, but it's really easy and intuitive. You just click and then click on the next point and it automatically makes the curve for you. You can be as detailed as you like. I think the charm of it though is that it's not super detailed. Right, and then double click to end your line, and that will turn the line into stitches. As you can see, the pink is really showing up, so it's going to be really easy to go around these outlines. Just do it one line at a time. You can do as many sections as you want. Um, I obviously would recommend to do as few sections as possible, just to make the uh, travel distance less when you're stitching out. If you're doing it for a business, things like that can matter. Also, just to save you time when you're actually doing it as well. I think all in all this process took me about maybe 10 minutes. You don't have to be a great artist for this. A lot of the work is done for you in the image. But obviously the more time you spend on it, the better it's going to be. I would try not to overlap lines too often, um, just as it can be messy on the stitch out. It's fine if lines intersect. I would try and block things out, like you can see here, his beard actually isn't like that full, but it just looks better in the end result if you, if you act as if it is. <laughs> the key is to simplify. I'm going to do something special with the flowers as you'll see in a bit. Right, so now you want to go back to image and where we changed the opacity before, just turn it all the way off. You can just delete the image, but in case you want to reference it again, it's easier this way. All 
Right, now I'm going to select the whole image and reduce the zigzag width. That's going to reduce the line thickness. After that, I'm going to want to change the color because in all of the ones I've seen online, they're just black. So once you change it to black, as you can see, it's starting to look like something now. At this point, I'm going to want to refine it. So I'm going to see any gaps that I've missed, go back in with my shape, my curved shape tool and just draw them back in. It doesn't have to be too precise because of this tool that I'm going to show you in a second. So yes, this tool right here is um, the point select tool. So if you click on any line that you've created, it will show you all of the points that make it up and you can click them individually and move them. So it doesn't matter if you weren't perfect in the first place because you can always connect up the lines after. With the flowers, I want to connect the lines together so that it's a complete object. To do that, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then drag it over the X which marks the point at the other end of the line. This will join it together and make it one solid object. At this point, you can then select that shape and either turn the fill off or do what I'm going to do, which is do a decorative fill. Because I want to give the illusion of the flowers that were there in her hand and make it more obvious. I'll select the fill. Then I'm going to change the view type so that I can actually see the stitches instead of block colors. At this point, I want to change the decorative fill scale so that it fits within the flowers and you can actually see some detail. To do that, you just change the numbers, but make sure you keep the same aspect ratio. Now I'm just going to go around and make those final touches again with the point select tool. If you want to split an object back up, you can do that with this split at point tool. That will make it not a solid object anymore and you can, you can move it at will as if it was a line. But you can always join it back together again with the Alt key. Now that the lines are thinner, I can I can see a lot more imperfections than I could at the start, and also some of the things may not have been so flattering. With the Shift key, you can select multiple points on the line and then drag them together, so you keep the same shape but just move it. Think of this like airbrushing a photo. <laughs> Right, I'm going to adjust her hairline here so it looks like there's actually some depth to it. It's not just a flat object on her head. <laughs> and I'd pretty much call that done. I'll play the preview at the bottom right just to see how the stitch out will be. I'm not quite happy with how the flowers turned out, so I'm going to select it then I'm going to change the zigzag off. I didn't like that either, so I'll change that to a running stitch. And I'm just going to play the preview again, just on the flowers, so I can see how that will stitch now. Yeah, I prefer that. There's not a harsh line around the flowers anymore. Don't like the bottom of her hair, it's too rounded. 
If you right click on a point, you can change it to a straight point instead of a curve. I then group the objects together by just selecting them all and then clicking group at the top. Now it's counted as one object so you can move it around together and scale it up and down and you don't have to worry about moving things out of position. I'm then going to save it. I'm just going to save it onto my computer but you can save it onto a memory stick or anything at all. If you have a data transfer cable to your machine you can do that. Or alternatively, if you have a wireless machine, you can send it via the send to network machine at the top right. Now let's get to stitching it out. I hope you enjoyed this Sew Machines UK video tutorial on P Design 11 and how to do something kind of trendy but also sort of Valentine's related. Um, I hope you found it useful and uh, there's many more of these to come. So don't forget to check out our website at www.sewmachinesuk.co.uk and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.